Director. Introduce so uh, my, my name is Terry Lancaster. I'm a copywriter. I'm a marketing consultant. I'm a storyteller. I'm a three-time number one best-selling author. Uh, I've, I'm a TEDx speaker. And uh, I'm uh, here to talk about the power of habit. Top of the hour, Terry. Terry Lancaster, the power of habit. How flushing your toilet can change your life. Terry Lancaster, take it away. So I was flying 30,000 feet above the Caribbean Sea, straight through the heart of the Bermuda Triangle when the little light comes on up above. The captain's voice comes over the speaker, says, uh, everyone, please uh, please return to your seats. It looks like we're going to be encountering just a, just a little bit of turbulence, just to be on the safe side. Everyone have a seat. So everyone kind of kind of gets quiet and we, uh, we, we, we flash around and check everything and everybody sits down and shortly after we sit down you know starts rocking just a little bit the sky gets dark there's a little lightning off in the distance and we're, we're kind of whispering going what's up and then the plane drops whoosh, a mile straight down out of the sky it was like a it was like the old uh, roadrunner cartoon movies where the coyote runs off the edge of the cliff and he looks around and there's no cliff under him and he just falls. And uh, two things happen. Two things happen simultaneously when we fell like that. Number one, the air mass, the air mass coming out of the, uh, out of the roof of the plane attached to the little rubber hoses. Every single one of those dropped down and started jiggling around like the worst party decorations in the history of the world, just jiggling everywhere. And number two, Roughly 50% of the people on that airplane vomited because our stomachs were a mile above us at the top of the sky right now. And here we are down here. So vomit goes everywhere. No one's got any time to grab a barf bag. We are covered in vomit, rubber hoses flopping everywhere. Everyone's screaming and then it stops. Just as suddenly as it started. And we start flying again, just move on out. Everything settles down. The sky lightens back, back up. Pretty as a picture. The captain comes on and, and, and chuckles. <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, that was, um, that was neat, but uh, we, uh, we had a little turbulence. Hit an air pocket, uh, but everything's fine now. We'll be, uh, we'll be landing in Miami in about uh, 10 minutes. Please enjoy the rest of your flight as we're picking each other's vomit. Uh, uh, out, out of our out, out of our laps. I didn't know that was a thing, but an air pocket is a thing. Um, the uh, that's uh, and if that was uh, if that was the worst thing that ever happened to me, be okay. Be okay but I'm gonna tell you some more stuff about Terry. Uh, I've survived cancer twice. I've had a gun held to my head. I've had a knife held to my throat. Uh, I've been at a building that was struck by a tornado. I got uh, I got thrown out of a boat uh, rafting down the Okoye River and went 400 yards down a Class Four rabbit. Uh, class four rapid and over the edge of a 12 foot waterfall. Uh, that's, that's not the scariest thing. The scariest thing though is I raised three teenage daughters and I've been married 34 years in a row to the same woman. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a storyteller, I'm a uh, uh, marketing strategist and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm a copywriter. I, um, I'm a storyteller and over those 34 years and for everything that I've been doing, I've come to believe one important thing. And this is, this is the important thing for Toastmasters. I believe with every fiber of my being that the story you tell the world changes the world. And that's the great thing about, to uh, about Toastmasters. It teaches us all how to tell a better story. And I appreciate you having me here today so that I can help tell my story. I've been a copywriter, again, 34, 34 years since the day I graduated from college, even a little before then, actually. And uh, for 34 years, I, I've, I've written radio and TV spots. I've written blog posts. I've written in Forbes magazine. I've written websites. And I've written three number one best-selling books. And I want to talk about one of them today. This is called Better Self-Help for the Rest of Us. And I think this is the reason I'm here, because Bert Copeland uh, read this book, and he, he's, he's a big fan. So thank you, Bert. But we're going to talk about the, the, the science of habit formation, because just a few years ago, I was a mess. I was a mess. I was a rapidly approaching my 50th birthday, 
and, and I looked around and realized, um, you know, I, I was a wreck. I was on the verge of divorce. I, I was, I was about, about half a donut shy of 300 pounds. I couldn't walk to the mailbox without stopping to catch my breath. Um, definitely couldn't run, couldn't run anywhere. And, um, and it just, I had this epiphany that you can be kind of a mess in your 30s and you can be kind of a mess in your 40s, but if you get up into your 50s and even a little beyond and you're a mess, you're going you're gonna to stay a mess. And, and that's, when, that's when everything's going to happen. And so I, I, had this, I had this mindset that I had to change. Something had to change and it had to be me. And I started looking around for what am I going to change. And like everyone else, when you decide you're going to change, we make a decision, boy, and, uh, and, and because we are, you know, Toastmasters, we're outgoing people, we're energetic, we're enthusiastic, and we're motivated. And so we go out and we look for that motivation. I decided I needed to make these changes in my life, and I started looking for the motivation, and I go to the same place that everyone else goes when they're looking for motivation, or at least uh, people of my age do, uh, and especially in the day. We went to the bookstore. Now we go on Amazon, and we look for the book. We look for that one book with, uh, with, with, the magic, with the magic key that's going to help us change us, our lives. And you look around at the books on the bookshelves uh, down at uh, Barnes & Noble or uh, in, our Amazon, uh, in our Amazon cart, and you look on those books of people who are trying to help us. And every one of those books, they've got these beautiful people on there, and they've got big, gleaming smiles. Tony Robbins has more teeth than any human being ought to be allowed to have. He's got, he's got a mouth full of teeth, boy. He's got the biggest smile I've ever seen. Uh, six packed abs, six foot six of a man. You know, Tony doesn't look like he needs any help. Why is he trying to tell me what I need to help? And every other better, uh, every other self-help author that I've seen, they all, you know, they look like they've got their, their life together. And so I tried to do the same thing that these people were recommending. I went out and I decided I was going to run a marathon or, or do all these things. I'll tell you the first thing I did. The first thing I did is I went out and got this, uh, this DVD. I got this DVD of a, of a boot camp uh, fitness program. I said, I'm going to go in 30 days. And, this, and you, people do this now. Uh, you see all these challenges on Facebook. I'm going to go 75 hard. That's the new one that everybody's on. P P90X, 75 hard. Well, I, 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 I grabbed this 30 day boot camp challenge. So here I am. I'm like 50 years old. I'm at least 100 pounds of overweight. And like I said, uh, three, 300 pounds. Couldn't, you know, couldn't, uh, couldn't walk to the mailbox. And I'm in my basement watching this DVD trying to do burpees. And uh, so that's, that's where you jump down on the floor, do a push up, jump back up, stand back up, jump back up, you know, and I did this about five times before something in my, one, one of my hip flexors just ripped. I said, nope, nope, we ain't doing that. Um, so because I was trying to get to the point where these, these self-help people were, were trying to be, and I wasn't starting where I was. And here's a little secret for you. You can't get where you're going unless you start where you are. So I, I, I didn't start where I was. I was trying to get, I was trying to get to here and I was trying to start here. You know, I was, I was trying to start, you know, the next level and you got to start where you are and get just a little bit better. And that, that's what the book is getting just a little bit better. And I, I was looking around, okay, now, well, how do, how do I get from here to there if I'm so far? And, and that's when we get frustrated. We get frustrated because we can't get to the next level because we try to skip everything in between. And uh, there's nothing really to help people get just a little bit better and those little bit of stair steps up above. And I ran across the, uh, a, a book that helped me and the, the book was called The Happiness Project. And uh, it, was the first, it was the first thing I ever read that helped me get to this idea. And it's by a young lady by the name of Gretchen Rubin. And the words I read, these words changed my life. What you do every day matters more than what you do every once in a while. Now, as, as outgoing and assertive and successful people, business people, I work a lot with salespeople doing sales training, especially as salespeople and business people, we, uh, we, 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 are all, we, we all think we're masters of our destiny, that our lives are a product of the decisions that we've made, that we create our own universe and we can turn everything around if we're just motivated enough, if we're just disciplined enough, if we just work hard enough. And if we're not getting what we want, that just means we're not working hard enough. Well, I started looking actually into the science of, of change and transformation. And it turns out that motivation, discipline, willpower, all of these things that we toss around, all of these words are horrible, horrible tools 
to use in self uh, self transformation. That if we truly want to make a change in our life, if we truly want to make our lives better, that we can't just decide to be better. We can't make a plan to be better. More of my favorite quotes, Mike Tyson, everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the mouth. The gyms are always full on January 2nd because we decided, all right, this is it. We've made our, we've made our, our, our wish list. We've, we've, we've made our, uh, our, our to-do list for the year. And we're, we're going to go in. These are our New Year's resolutions. We're going to go in, and this is the year. We're going to change ourselves. But then January 2nd, the gyms are full. January 3rd, everyone backs off a little bit. January 4th, by the end of January, the gyms are empty again because life punched them in the mouth. And the, the truism came out that motivation, willpower, discipline will always fail you. They will always fail you at the exact moment you need the most. And you need willpower and motivation and discipline at the moment you've completely run out of willpower, motivation, and discipline. When you just can't do no more, that's when you need this stuff and it's of no good to you because now, now you're out. And so we, 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 then we're we constantly looking for more books to, to boost up boost up our motivation and we get on this little treadmill of, of, uh, of going up and going up and down and whatever transformation we're trying to make, whether we're trying to get healthier whether we're trying to improve our business, whether we're trying to get new members into our Toastmaster club, we go through these cycles where we're super motivated and these cycles where, well, it's just not working. I don't, I don't know what to do. And the word, the word that's going to get you past motivation and willpower and discipline, the roller coaster ride of those is, is my favorite word, automaticity. Automaticity. And I, I'm an I'm a English major. I've been putting words together in pleasing order my entire life. Uh, I, I write books. I had, well, the first time I saw that word, I had to go look up the word to make sure it was actually a word, to make sure it actually meant something. Automaticity is, means that things can happen with, with unconscious thought without the higher level thought necessary, that things happen auto, automatically, almost like magic things begin to happen. The transformation that we're occurring can happen like magic if you do one thing, if you create the habits. Because we're not a product of the decisions that we've made. Decisions come and go. How many times have you decided to do what you're gonna do? Decisions come and go, but habits, habits are what transform your life. And here's what a habit is. People get confused as to exactly what habit means. And a habit is just a program that exists in your brain to make things happen automatically, to create the automaticity. It's, it's a why, it's, it's, it's if this, then that. It's a computer program that lets you do things the same way without having to stop and think about them every time. You've been making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches the same way your mama showed you how to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches 50 years ago. You put the peanut butter on this side, you put the jelly on that side and you squish them together the exact way you've always done it because that's the way you've always done it. You drive to work every day listening to the radio. You're lost in thought. We, we, we operate inside our head 50% of the time. We're operating on autopilot 50% of the time using the internal programming that's in our brain so that we don't have to think about it. You drive to work every day the same way because that's the same way you've always driven to work. You tie your shoes the same way. The rabbit goes over the rabbit into the hole. I don't know what the thing is, but we do it the same way because it's the same way we've always done it. And we're operating out of habit. So a habit is just a program to help you get things done the way you want things to do without having to stop and think about it. So you don't have to have the motivation that you get up every day and do the thing that you want to do without thinking about it. So what I want you to do is we're going to, I'm going to give you a five-step program here so that you can create the habits that you want, so that you can create a habit to get you to the point you want to be without having to constantly motivate yourself and get yourself pumped up and ah, look yourself in the mirror and say, doggone it, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and, and people like me, all the things we do to, to get us through. I'm going to teach you how to program your brain so that what you want to happen happens automatically but automatically but the first thing i want you to do first thing i want you to do is think about what you want think about a habit 
something that you want to create in your life, something that you want to do on a regular basis, where you want to be, if you want to be healthier, if you want to be more successful, if you want your group to grow, whatever habit you're trying, what, whatever outcome you're trying to, uh, whatever outcome you're trying to achieve. And that's, that's one of the key things is to quit thinking about the outcome. When we write those, um, when we write those new year's resolutions, most people, when they tell you their new year's resolution, they, they read you, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to save $10,000. I want, I want to, I want to increase my income 30%. I want, I want 20 new members uh, to join in the group, whatever that is. We think about the outcomes. So the first step to think about the habits is instead of thinking about the outcomes, think about the actions that you need to take to get to that outcome. So right now, think about what you want. Think a little bit about what, what actions you have to take to achieve the results you want to achieve. And, and here's the key. You have to start small. Step one is you have to start small. So while you're thinking about the result that you want to achieve and the action that you have to take to get there, I want you to think about the very first step. If you want to go from where you are right now, if you, if you write on January 1st, I'm going to run a marathon and you go out and you start running one day and you try to run 26 point some odd miles, you're going to, you're going to rip something. You're going to tear a hammy. You're going to blow your knee out. You're not going to be able to run that. And, and you're going to get discouraged and you're going to, you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to let it slide. So instead of, instead of talking about running a marathon, let's talk about running a mile. Let's talk about walking a mile. If you're a fat boy, let's talk about walking to the mailbox. If you can't get that motivated thing, your first step, I've had some people tell me the first step, the first thing that has to happen if you're going to run a marathon is you have to put on your running shoes. So if some people just can't get in the habit, say you want, you want to develop the habit of running every single morning and whatever the distance is, the first step you've got to take is you've got to put on your shoes. So think about the first thing that's going to take to get you there putting on your shoes. If you want to get new members in your organization, the first step you have to take is you have to pick up the phone, uh, pick, up, pick up the phone and uh, call, text, email, or message one person to invite them. So step one is invite one person. If you're trying to improve your business, step one is to call one customer, whether it's a past customer that you're trying to reconnect with or a new customer that you're trying to reconnect uh, with. Step one is, is, has to be small because you, you need these tiny victories to start propelling you forward. And if you get discouraged on the outset, you're never going to do it enough to make it a habit. So step one, start small. And I'm, I want you to write my phone number down, 615-804-0311. 615-804-0311. That's me, Terry Lancaster. And uh, I want you to text me step one of what it is, what you're trying to achieve and what step one is. You can text me later when you, when you, when you get a chance, but do that. I want to hear where you're going, how you're going to get there and how you're going to get started. Now, step two, step two is the interesting part because, all right, we've got a plan now, but we've got a plan uh, and we've, we've, we, we're trying to write this program to operate it in our head. And I told you that a computer program is, is a logical statement. If this, then that. And a habit is exactly the same thing. If this, then that. It's, it's, it's a pro computer program that we write in our head. So we need the start button. We need the initial thing that says, if this, if this thing happens, I'm going to do the other thing. Uh, now, you know, we have all these bad habits that we already have. If you're, a, if you're overweight, if you're, you're, you're a little shy of 300 pounds, you're, you know, if you see a box of donuts, you're going to eat donuts. If I see donuts, eat donuts. That, that, that's a pretty simple transformation. We have the trigger there. And there's a guy by the name of BJ Fogg wrote a book called Tiny Habits. And uh, he, he, he did this thing. And this is where the title of this speech comes from, uh, for how flushing the toilet can change your life. He decided that he wanted to get stronger and he, needed, he wanted to do more push-ups. And he was going to start small with doing one push-up. And he needed something to initiate the idea in his head. Uh, if you smoke, if you smoke, uh, when back in the day when everybody smoked, as soon as everyone finished eating, cigarettes came out. They started smoking, right? Because that was the trigger. I finished eating. It's time to smoke my cigarette. So look for the trigger. And his trigger was, I'm going to do these. Uh, I'm going to do a push-up every time. I need something I do often enough to make it interesting. Okay, I'm going to do a push-up every time I go pee. 
So every time he went to the bathroom to urinate, he decided he was going to step out in the hallway when he got done and do a, uh, and, and do a push up. His trigger was the sound of that toilet flushing. So look for a trigger, something that you can link what you want to happen so that you can know when to start the program to, to, to move forward. Step three, the only way to do it is to do it. We can plan all we want. We can have the best intentions. We can make the best decisions. Uh, we, can, we can write down the 17 point program, but until we actually do the thing, until we actually do the thing that we're trying to step. And again, you have to talk about actions, not results. Until we actually put one foot in front of the other, nothing happens. Uh, I, I know thoughts are magic, but thoughts don't feed the bulldog. You actually have to do the thing. Start small. Look for a trigger that tells your brain to get started and then do the thing. And step four is the, uh, is the, is the hard part and we often forget it. And, but th this, this is what makes a habit a habit. Your brain is a pleasure seeking mechanism. Uh, if you see a box of donuts, you're going to eat a box of donuts because you know, as soon as you take the bite out of that donut, oh, it's going to taste good. It's going to taste good and it's going to release all those pleasure sensors in your brain. Your brain's going to get flooded with dopamine and serotonin. And your brain says, and your brain starts to connect those two things. It starts to connect those two things where if I bite this donut, I'm going to get the happy juice in my head. And then your brain starts looking for opportunities to find those donuts so it can get that happy juice. So I want you to do the same thing with whatever habit you're creating. If you put your shoes on, if you make one phone call, if you invite, invite one new member, put your arms up in the air over your head, take a deep breath, smile like you mean it, and say, say something, yay me, I'm so awesome, smile, and actually feel happy because if you feel happy, you're gonna release all those, uh, all those chemicals and neurotransmitters in your brain that tells your brain you're happy. Your brain is going to uh, go, oh yeah, and it starts to connect those things. When I make the phone call, I get the dose of happy juice. I mean, a habit is an addiction. It's the same thing with your biting donuts, shooting heroin in your arms, or showing, sho shoving your arms up, up in the air. That's called a power pose. And uh, there's a great TEDx speak about that, how just doing that completely transforms your neurochemistry because it releases these happy chemicals in your brain. So release those happy chemicals in your brain so your brain starts to do this reward and you get this cycle going. Trigger, action, reward. Trigger, action, reward. Trigger, action, reward. That's a habit. The constant cycle, that's how you create that. And step five, repeat. Do it again and again and again. Do it until you can't not do it. My, and the, the X's come, um, there's a thing called the Jerry Seinfeld technique. And Jerry Seinfeld, uh, he, 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 back in the day, he was a prolific joke writer. He was a prolific joke writer and a young comedian came to him one day and says, Jerry, how do you, how do you, how are you always funny? How are you always got new material? And Jerry says, well, I write every day. And the guy says, well, what, uh, what if I'm not feeling it? What if I don't, you know, what if I don't feel good? What if it's raining? Do I still need to go outside and run? You know, we always got these excuses. Our brain is looking for excuses. And Jerry says, listen, I have to write every day. It's my job. So here's what I do. I got a big calendar on my desk and I got a red Sharpie and every day, Every single day, I sit down and write a joke. When I write a joke that day, I put a big X on that day. I put a big X on that day, and I move. And the next day, I come in, and I, uh, I, I, I write another joke, and I put another X on that calendar. Now I got two Xs in a row. Come in the, other, in the third day, and I put another X on that calendar. I got three Xs in a row. Pretty soon, you got a bunch of Xs in a row, and you'll do anything not to break the streak. I can hear it in Jerry Seinfeld's voice. Don't break the streak. You know, don't break the streak, whatever you can do to keep the streak going. And here's what I did back in the day when I couldn't get to the mailbox without, when I couldn't get to the mailbox without breaking into sweat, I decided that I was going to run every single day. And I started off, I started off small, and then I got to the point where I could run a mile every day. And I was running a mile every day. The first day I ran a mile in the row in a day, I came home celebrating like I'm Rocky, running up the stairs of the, the, uh, uh, in, in Philadelphia there in front of the Benjamin Franklin uh, statue and bump, 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 bump. Neighbors thought I was crazy that day. And I ran every single day for a year in a row, for two years in a row, for three years in a row, every single day. So I didn't break the streak. I got to, I got, when I got to 500 days, I thought I'd done something. I started looking up the world record for most days running in a row. 
Turns out there's a guy who did it every single day for 40 years. So no way I'm getting close to that. But he told me, he said, when it gets up to there, you will do anything, anything not to, uh, not to break the streak. He ran on the deck of a cruise ship, which, which I've done. He ran on the deck of a cruise ship, but he did it in a hurricane. He had knee surgery one morning. He ran at three o'clock in the morning before he got into surgery and he ran at midnight the next night so he could keep the streak alive. I ran, I've ran uh, uh, on oceans, I've ran up mountains, I've ran down, mount, down mountains, I ran across the Golden Gate Bridge, never thought I would be a runner, but I ran every single day not to break the streak. Then one day, I broke the streak. I had to drive over to Knoxville to pick up my youngest daughter, she was a freshman at the University of Tennessee, and it rained the whole way there, and it rained the whole way back, and I was miserable, and uh miserable and I decided and I didn't decide anything I, I, I drove her over there drove back it was 11 o'clock at night uh, when we got back and I was just too tired I fell asleep I fell asleep without running and the next day I woke up and I knew that I I, I, I knew immediately I woke up the birds were the birds were chirping the sun was shining and I thought man it's gonna be a good day I'm gonna go run in the park and then it hit me I, I, I didn't run yesterday because no matter how much you program your brain sometimes life gets in the way so the streak was broken, but I did the thing I'm proudest. I'm more proud of this than almost anything I've accomplished in my life. The minute I realized I had broken the streak after a thousand, no, I was, I was, I was 1400 days is when I broke the streak. 1400 days in a row, I broke the streak, but I got up immediately, put my shoes on and went and ran a mile. And I came back and I put on Facebook one. And I started the streak all over again because it had been easy to write and make an excuse. It had been easy to go, okay, well, that was a good run. That was a good run, but I didn't. I started all over again. And I ran for another year and a half and I blew my knee out. I blew my knee out uh, during COVID last year. And I, was, I got to the point where one day I couldn't run. So I walked a mile and I kept walking. I walked another, another year since then. So I've walked or ran a mile every single day for the last seven years. And here's what happens. You start making your life better a little bit at a time. You're going you're gonna to give the people around you permission to make their life better a little bit at a time. My wife lost 40 pounds walking a mile every single day. She's at 1,800 days now walking a, while, uh, walking a mile. My youngest daughter, who, who hates running, still hates it to this day. She's, uh, she's ran a mile every single day for the last 15 1800 days because we're all uh you know you hear that uh this thing that we are all um we're the we're the average of the five people that we hang out the most but i'm gonna tell you a more important thing the five people you hang out with the most they're a reflection of you they're a reflection of you and you have a right to be better you have a responsibility to be better so that you can help make them better so be better right now i want you to do one thing for me we got two minutes left i want you to stand up so nobody, nobody else on camera stand stand up for me uh if you're in your living room wherever you are i want you to stand up here i'll stand up too so you don't feel you don't feel bad stand up take a good deep breath take tb three deep breaths in smile i want you to think about what you're wanting to what you're wanting to accomplish what's the outcome that you want to achieve where do you want to be are you trying to be healthier are you trying to improve your business? Are you trying to grow, grow your club? You trying to improve your relationship with your spouse, your significant other? You think about that outcome and think about that one small step that you decided you're, you're gonna take. Raise your arms up in the air, give, give them a wiggle. And I want you to picture that outcome and you doing that small step tomorrow, picking up the phone, calling your mama, tell your mama that you love her, calling your wife, telling her that you love her. Take a deep breath, picture that in your brain, let that happy juice flood on your brain so you can start connecting those neurotransmitters. I want this to happen and this is how I'm gonna happen. And you have to celebrate. And here's my favorite, favorite words with your arms way up in the air while you're thinking about what you want to happen and who you wanna be and how you're gonna get there one step at a time over and over and over again, every single day until it can't not happen. Well, that's in your brain and you're smiling happy. Say these, these magic words with me, Every ready? The magic words, celebrate, flood your brain with happy juice, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great day.